JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, taxi operator shot while fighting off would be robbers. A St. Catherine taxi operator was shot and injured as he fought off two men who allegedly attempted to rob him along Bay Farm Road in St. Andrew on Friday afternoon. The Olympic Gardens police say about 12.10 p.m. The men boarded the taxi, posing as customers. They later pulled a gun and attempted to rob the taxi operator. A struggle ensued and the operator was shot in his left shoulder. He lost control of the vehicle and collided into another vehicle. The attackers reportedly ran from the taxi, leaving behind a magazine containing eight 9mm rounds of ammunition. The police were alerted. The ammunition was handed over to the police and the taxi operator taken to hospital. I would have engaged police in shootout if I had more bullets, St. Mary Man said. A St. Mary Man was arrested on charge with firearms-related offences. is alleged to have told one of the arresting officers that he had planned to engage him in a shootout, but didn't do so because he didn't have enough bullets. The shocking statement was made by 24-year-old Neil Walters, a construction worker of Charlestown in St. Mary. Walters was arrested during a spot check on the Salt Marsh Main Road in Falmouth, Trelawney, late last month. On Monday, August 28th this year, Walters was a passenger in a Toyota Isis motor car being operated as a taxi when the vehicle was ordered to stop by a police team on highway patrol duties. The police said they observed Walters tucking an object in his waistband before exiting the vehicle. Walters was searched and a .45 pistol with three rounds of ammunition was taken from his waistband. According to a source, after being arrested, Walters went off on a rant telling the police in uncertain terms that he's a bad man. It's understood, he told one of the arresting officers that after being pulled over, he thought of joining his weapon and challenging the policeman who approached the motor car. He says he didn't follow through with his thought because of how tactically the policeman approached the vehicle. He's also understood to have said that he suppressed the urge to fight the policeman when he recalled that he only had three bullets in his gun. What does his rant didn't stop there? He told the arresting officer that the next time he encounters them on the road, he'll not hesitate to shoot. Walters told the arresting officers that soon he'll be out on the road on bail. He's alleged to have said that he'll continue to murder people because he's a murderer. Walters is understood to have said he has zero fear of the police as he's a proud murderer. The source also revealed that Walters told the police that his brothers, Nicholas Walters and Nigel Walters, are killers. Those two men are before the courts answering to charges related to double murders in St. Elizabeth and Westmoreland. As for Neil Walters himself, he is a person of interest in several crimes in St. Mary. The police want to speak with him about the murder and robbery of a licensed farm holder, Wayne Williams. Williams was shot and killed on January 23, 2021 and his gun stolen. Walters is also a person of interest in the armed robbery of two Chinese nationals in Three Hills, St. Mary, on August 27, 2023. That incident happened a day before it was picked up by the police in Trelawney. Walters is facing charges of possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. Government and opposition condemn gun attack on nationwide. The government has reacted with shock to what it calls a brazen attack on the offices of Nationwide News Network. A statement from the office of the Prime Minister says the government condemns the incident, adding that it must never be seen in Jamaica again. The incident happened about 4.30 p.m. at NNN's Bradley Avenue location. Three shots were fired into a car in the parking lot, resulted in a shattered window and wing screen. No one was wounded in the attack. OPM noted that the shooting affects not only NNN but all media and restated its commitment to and support of press freedom and the opposition People's National Party has expressed relief that no one was physically harmed in the attack. The PMP said it was astonished by the reports of the shooting, while also recalling that some months ago, a nationwide employee was reported to have narrowly escaped a gun attack while driving to work. The opposition party is calling for anyone with information regarding the motives behind these incidents to speak with the police. The Media Association of Jamaica, MAJ, in its response, said it was disgusted and disappointed at the gun attack on the station, noting that attacks on media must be strongly condemned. The MAJ said media houses stand resolute with Nationwide and its employees in the face of intimidation. It also called for the authorities 
to promptly investigate the matter with a view to bringing those responsible to justice. Earlier, the Press Association of Jamaica also condemned the attack on Nationwide, describing it as reprehensible and cowardly. PJ President Milton Walker said the incident represents a grave attack on the fundamental principles of press freedom that all Jamaicans hold dear. More than 30 Haitians landed in Port London boat. A boat carrying 36 Haitians landed on the shores of Long Bay in Portland on Saturday morning. According to reports, the group comprising 18 men, 9 women and 9 children arrived about 6 a.m. It is the second reported boatload of Haitians to land in Jamaica over the last two months. In July, 37 Haitians landed on Boston Beach in Portland. They have since applied for asylum in Jamaica. Haiti has been married for years in intertwining economic, security and political crises, resulting in thousands of citizens fleeing the country. The assassination of President Jovenel Moise in 2021 has dramatically worsened the situation with gangs taking an increasingly strong hold. Supermarket worker allegedly caught on camera stealing over $200,000. A charge of simple arsony has been laid against a 19-year-old man who was allegedly caught on camera stealing more than $200,000 from the supermarket where he works in Bogwalk, St. Catherine. The accused is Michael Ball from Riversdale District, St. Catherine. Ball was charged on Friday by the Bogwalk police in the parish. The police report that about 2 p.m. on Thursday, monies were discovered missing at the business establishment. The police were summoned and Bo arrested after camera footage suggested he removed the funds from the supermarket, which is located along Main Street in the rural township. The money includes 678 U.S. dollars, 680 Canadian dollars, and 47,000 Jamaican dollars. The matter is set for mention in the St. Catherine Parish Court on September 20. Extradited Jamaican woman held on three million US dollars bond after allegedly killing boyfriend, a Jamaican woman who was extradited to the US on charges connected to the murder of her boyfriend, was reportedly ordered held in low three million US dollars bail on Friday. Judge Maria Gonzalez imposed the bond on 39-year-old Ayanna Reynolds when the defendant stood before in handcuffs in a Bridgeport, Connecticut court. According to the Connecticut Post, Gonzalez justified the high bond on Reynolds by stating that there's a significant risk of flight. Prosecutors had reportedly urged the judge to set a high bail, while the defense lawyer had asked the judge for leniency, arguing that Reynolds is a mother of four children and has no prior criminal convictions. Reynolds is set to return to court on October 3. A warrant for Reynolds' arrest was issued in January 2022 after the death of a Jamaican-born boyfriend in Bridgeport. Andrea Brown, 36, who lived in Bronx, New York, before moving to Connecticut, was found shot to death in a front yard on Marcel Street in Bridgeport. According to reports, a resident of the Marcel Street house told the police that Brown had come to stay there earlier that day after Reynolds kicked Brown out of the couple's apartment. The witness reportedly said that about 10 p.m., Reynolds went to the house demanding to see Brown. After Brown went outside, the witness reportedly heard gunshots and subsequently saw Reynolds speeding away in her Mercedes SUV and Brown suffering from gunshot wounds. Another witness reportedly told police that he heard the gunshots and looked out of the window to see Reynolds driving away. The claim was reportedly supported by a nearby surveillance video. Police reportedly contacted Reynolds, who told them she was not around. When told that Brown had been shot, she reportedly responded, Yes, I heard, and hung up the phone. Her Mercedes SUV was later found abandoned in the Bronx, according to reports. Reynolds was tracked to Jamaica and was held in July 2023 during a targeted operation at her home in Montego Bay, St. James, where she was staying with her boyfriend. She was extradited to the U.S. earlier this week. Narcotics police charged four men with breaches of Dangerous Drugs Act. The Narcotics Police have arrested and charged four men for breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act in Evendale, Kingston on Thursday. It was reported that during an anti-narcotics operation, two pounds of ganja, 389,000 Jamaican dollars and 120 US dollars were found. The men were taken into custody and subsequently charged with possession of ganja, dealing with ganja, using premises for the sale of ganja and possession of criminal property. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. JPN we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share. Leave us a comment 
and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.